What is gravity? When we say gravity, it seems like anything with weight is pulled towards the Earth, and that's gravity. Testing this gravity is easy. Just stand on a scale, and it shows how much gravity force pulls you down. But that's not all we know about this gravity. For example, the Sun has such a powerful gravity that it keeps eight small planets and a giant one orbiting around it. But compared to the most powerful gravitational forces in the universe, even the Sun's gravity is quite weak. The strongest gravitational forces are in black holes, which don't even let light escape from them. Now, this force or gravity, or whatever you call it, how does it work? What exactly is gravity? How does our Earth, just a rocky planet, have so much power hidden within it? Please, stay with us, and let's uncover the mysteries of gravity together. If we want to understand the meaning of gravity, we need to grasp a bit of physics. You know Newton, right? He was sitting under an apple tree when an apple fell on his head. But that's just a funny story. In reality, Newton observed an apple falling to the ground and wondered why it fell straight down without veering off to the side or shooting up into the sky. Newton believes that the Earth's force is so strong that the apple can't do anything other than being pulled towards it. It has to take the shortest route to the Earth, which is straight down. From that moment on, Newton was obsessed with figuring out why things fall the way they do. He investigated tirelessly, but he couldn't quite understand where this pulling energy came from and what its source was. All he could say was that anything with weight has gravity, and the more weight something has, the stronger its gravity. Even an atom has gravity, but it's so tiny compared to its weight that we don't notice it. 400 years passed since Newton's story, and no one could come to a conclusion about it. Until in the year 1905, Mr. Albert Einstein, this great man, introduced the theory of relativity. This theory completely challenged Newton's ideas. That's why at the time, everyone made fun of Albert Einstein. Plus, because Albert was Jewish, people would say, here comes a Jew talking about the God of physics. The theory of relativity states that if you're in a vacuum, meaning outside Earth's atmosphere, everything moves at the same speed regardless of its weight. Mr. David Scott, one of the 12 astronauts who went to the moon, conducted this experiment on the moon. As you know, the moon is a vacuum and has no atmosphere. David Scott held a hammer in one hand and a feather in the other and released them simultaneously. He observed that both objects, despite having different weights, reached the surface of the moon at the same time. This experiment completely confirmed Einstein's theory of relativity. Einstein mentioned another important thing, that two large objects in space don't pull each other toward themselves. Instead, the effect they exert on the fabric of space pulls them towards each other. Einstein said that the gravity of the sun doesn't directly pull planets towards it. Rather, it's the weight of the sun and the effect it has on the fabric of space that causes everything around it to be drawn towards the sun. You can easily test this theory at home. If you place a heavy ball in the center of a fabric and smaller balls around it, the weight of the heavy ball will bend the fabric downward and capture the smaller balls around it, preventing them from escaping their orbit. Einstein also said that a heavy object not only bends space, but also bends time. So the experience of time in that area is different from other areas. He said that the world is four-dimensional, but we only have access to three dimensions. The fourth dimension is time, which moves uniformly in one direction, and we can't do anything about it except in science fiction movies.
Well, this fabric we talked about pulling planets towards sun. But why does our Earth also have gravity? Because Earth is also a large object, and it not only pulls all of us towards itself, but also prevents the Moon from escaping its grasp. The Moon is forced to orbit around the Earth, just as the Earth can't escape the Sun's pull. Einstein's ideas haven't been proven definitively yet, but no other theory has been proposed and proven. Even NASA scientists used Einstein's theory to speed up Voyager. As you know, Voyager is a space probe, the fastest thing humans have built so far, traveling at 17 kilometers per second. It gains this high speed from the gravity of various planets. Voyager enters orbit around Jupiter, makes a loop around it, and is then slingshot into space like an arrow. The speed Voyager has, 17 kilometers per second, is all taken from the gravity of Jupiter, and there's no fuel to propel Voyager forward. You might say this speed doesn't remain constant and decreases, but no, because in space, there's no friction to slow it down. The important question here is, for example, space stations placed 400 kilometers above Earth are stationary in their orbits. Even when astronauts leave these stations, they seem weightless. Why doesn't Earth's gravity pull them toward itself? Earth's gravity not only pulls space stations toward itself, but also pulls all satellites. However, the pull is different. And because they're outside the atmosphere, the pressure Earth exerts on them causes them to move in orbit around Earth and creating orbits. Earth pulls the space station, but it moves in orbit around Earth. Now, do you know how fast these space stations are moving? 28,000 kilometers per hour. You might ask, how are some satellites focused on a specific area of Earth? This is because these satellites are placed in higher orbits and can adjust their speed with Earth's rotation. For instance, a satellite can always monitor the Middle East. It's interesting that when Einstein talked about the fabric of space, everyone made fun of him. But now, most advanced human technologies work based on Einstein's relativity theory. Newton's theory of gravity is also commendable for us because he announced this theory 400 years before Einstein and it was a significant discovery in his time. Now, how do these theories describe black holes? Black holes are so heavy that they bend space fabric to a large extent. If a planet, star, or anything else falls into the trap of these black holes, there's no escape. Once you understand Einstein's theory of relativity, you'll see how much easier it is to imagine space and planetary motion. But it's interesting to note that no physicist or scientist has been able to confirm or refute this story. Scientists believe that to fully understand gravity, we need to find a black hole and be able to see it almost clearly. Only then can we understand how gravity is produced and truly grasp Albert Einstein's ideas. You might wonder, why doesn't James Webb focus on the universe to find a black hole and explore it? Well first, James Webb is designed not to find black holes. Its main purpose is to search for light from the first stars and galaxies that formed in the universe after the Big Bang. However, perhaps in the future, NASA will send new space explorers specifically designed to find black holes and study them. What do you think?